to the Muskrat crew and other interested parties. Come forward. Take, take a few pictures. Oh. John's got his camera. Oh, John, John, you got your camera? Oh, John, sorry. you want to weld that? OK. If I don't fuck I'm going to be here, I brought my good camera. No, that's better, because you can just send them. OK. Come on up. You'll be on TV. So if you're wanted for anything. <laughs> Get you know, all the muskrats on this side. The picture. Some can get on this side. Some can get on this side. All right. I'm going to read this. All right. Do you want to hold this for me? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Just start it. So again, gather in here. Right here, like that. It's, it's recording right now. So just okay, you're on. It's a Maryland proclamation, kill both muskrat and crew appreciation day in Hernan, Missouri. Whereas the muskrat is a Missouri River killboat whose namesake plied the river in the early 1800s and actually stopped in what is now Hernan, Missouri in 1825, and whereas the crew of muskrat adventurers desire to relive the downriver voyage and take it all at all in the adventure, hard work, risk, and accomplishments such as a trip would provide. And whereas this crew of adventurers consisted of William N. Bailey, Captain, Jerry Mesmer, John Robert Harvey, Jack Poncho Mitch, and Scott Amish Skaggs. And whereas the crew successfully navigated the wild Missouri River from a point in South Dakota to St. Charles, Missouri, stopping to meet me in Herman. And whereas a journal of this river trip is recorded and available for all to enjoy on Journey of the Keelboat Muskrat Facebook page. And whereas on October 10th, 2019, Captain Bailey donated the Muskrat to the city of Herman to use as a permanent reminder to all that the Missouri River was our first superhighway and the only way to move people and goods through our state until roads and then railroads were built. Now therefore I, Dr. Robert C. Kerber, Mayor of Herman, Missouri, do hereby proclaim February 10th, 2020 as Keelboat, Muskrat, and Crew Appreciation Day throughout our city and urge all citizens of Herman to welcome our guests and extend to them our thanks and appreciation for their wonderful feat and kind gift to our city. We applaud them here today. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of Herman, Missouri to be affixed this 10th day of February, 2020. Congratulations. Okay. And we will accept this on behalf of the Captain uh, William Bailey. Very nice. I'm going to let it give that to you. I'm going to say a couple things while I've got them up here. We're going to have our first meeting Saturday to try to plan for the future of the muskrat and where we're going to keep it and how we're going to do it. And 
I were going to try to get funds to build it and and so forth, the museum items and so forth we think we have or can get. I've been overwhelmed with all the generosity of people donating things for this purpose of this museum, donating their time already. So we're going to take them up on it, and we're going to build a very, very nice museum and house, boat house for the Musgrave. And if you will think back, I remember meeting these guys down at the river at a campfire. It was one of those, I guess, September, October nights. October. October. A little crisp and Christmas in the air. And here these guys were dressed like they were in, in uh, it would have been in 1820 or something like that. And the captain, we negotiated this, we made a deal on the over the campfire. And it was really something. And I, I really can see that they, they're quite adventurers to come that far on that boat, on that river. So I really um, tip my hat to you, and I do wear a hat, so I tip that to you, I don't have it now. But, uh, and I appreciate everything you've done. So thank you. I'm going to shake everybody's hand again. Thank you. And thank you, and thank you for it. And that pretty much concludes our presentation. Uh, can can you I say something? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, anybody. Again, I, I don't live in Herman. I grew up here near Herman. Uh, and I was able to uh, crew on the muskrat for one day and provided some uh, logistical support as it came down the river. But I really applaud uh, your mayor and the city of Herman, uh, your vision to accept this, this donation of the keel boat and what it can mean for the future of Herman as far as being another chance to educate people and, and celebrate the history of Herman, especially the river aspects of the city of Herman. I think it, it's got a bright future here in this city, uh, and I think you'll find a lot of support, not only from the city, but all across the country of what you're trying to do here. So for that, we thank oh, you. Very good, thank you. And anyone else? Okay, mm -hmm. well, I'll see some of you Saturday, and we'll uh, make plans, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's extra copies there for them. Yep. <coughs> okay, Jordan, thanks. Push it all over here in your phone. Okay. That's what that was. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. Well, it didn't mark for once. No, I changed that to some kind of Robin Hood French horn. That's equally bad. It goes off in church or something. Okay, uh, I'm going to postpone the mayor's report and the city administrator report and get right to the ordinance. I wasn't sure if uh, how much time we had, so uh, Dave, do you want to start on reading the ordinance? Okay. Uh, the first, uh, which is on for second reading, is Bill Number 2019-53. An ordinance to amend the Herman Municipal Code to provide that bed and breakfast in these guest houses, vacation rentals, or homes, and any other non-owner occupied lodging establishments, bed and breakfast inns, and guest houses, shall be allowed in the R2 and R3 zoning districts by conditional use permit only, and to establish regulations for all new and existing lodging establishments in all zoning districts. Okay, this is the second reading. Do I have a motion or do we, I assume we've talked about this quite a bit. I think we have four hours of testimony. Uh, do I have a motion that we accept the second? I have one thing to say real quick before we vote on anything tonight. Okay. It's gotten a little confusing, not only in this meeting and other meetings, but I don't think we're voting correctly. When you vote in favor of something, you say aye. Ah. When you vote against something, you say nay. We've been using I for both ends of that scale. And there's been some problems with that in the past, and I think we ought to follow those rules from here on out. Very good. Okay. We will. Okay, do I have a motion? I move that Bill number 2019-53 be declared second read. <coughs> have a second. No, second. Okay, we have a motion for the second reading. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Nay. The motion carries. Read one. The next one, please. All right. The next one is bill number 2020-02, two, an ordinance to provide that the city of Herman, Missouri will participate in the 2020 Show Me Green sales tax holiday. I move bill 2020-02, second vote. I'll second that, please. Okay, we have a motion made and duly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. is carried on second reading. All right. Next is bill number 
an ordinance authorizing the execution of a lease for buyout property between the city as lessor and Mark Derby as lessee. Okay, and this is a lease, Trish help me out, but this is a lease for property, flood property, and they're leasing it for a certain period of time to use it for a parking lot or something like that. That is correct. Um, yeah, he, we've, he's used this for a number of years. It is a flood buyout lot down there on um, 5th Street, and he does the mowing, so it keeps the city from having to do the maintenance. Everybody up here probably knows that, but the people watching might not know that. So, Okay, what uh, do we have a motion? If I move Bill 2020, there's 03 for approval. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. That motion is carried. Next is bill number 2020-04, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a business lease between the city as lessor and CNB Car Wash LLC as lessee. Okay, this is the same thing. Just a few different words, but it's the same thing. Make a motion to bill 2020-04. First read. Second. Motion's made and seconded on this side. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. Next is bill number 2020-05, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2148 regarding the budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. Trish, do you need to any time to explain this? Or? Um, yeah, I can briefly. Uh, we do this semi-annually. You guys are probably getting used to that. Uh, we do a few here at the mid-year, which were just for unexpected things. Some of these are for grants we receive. Some of these are for unexpected uh, repairs to equipment. Um, some of the large expenses, like in the electric department, are because we had budgeted the last fiscal year for them. And then right there in May and June, they discovered they couldn't get things done because of the flood. And so we've had to carry that over. And so we just need to adjust the budget. Um, to agree with those expenses being spent this year. Uh, the bulk of the adjustments are usually at the end of the year and that will be in June. And actually, if we could, if we could read it twice, um, we're working on preparing the new budget reports and I'd like to have these numbers in the computer before we do that. Okay. Do I have a motion? I move 2020-05 first round. I will second that. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. You can get the next time. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Second reading, please, Mr. Lee. Bill number 2020-05, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2148 regarding the budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. Now, I Mr. hope Sherman. that bill number 2020-5 be declared second read. Second. Have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, next is bill number 2020-06, which would be an ordinance to amend Herman Municipal Code Chapter 650 to regulate certain vehicles available for hire by the public for transportation. I will say this, that uh, we had a gap of uh, between uh, 10 passengers and 15 passengers, and we had to fill that because that wasn't contained in our either ordinance. We added it, we added um, horse-drawn carriages, and also made the fee $32.50 instead of $50 so that they're all the same, which I think is what the alderman wanted. Do I have a motion to accept this? I move Bill 2020-06 first. Do I have a second? Second. Sorry. Have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. That motion is carried. We're going to read that again later, uh, next time. Uh, unless there's a reason, but I think we're okay. Couldn't make it till next time. Uh, okay, and now the resolution, why don't you read that and I'll uh, talk on that. Resolution number 1276, a resolution to describe facts and reasons for a necessary amendment to the city's budget for fiscal year 2019 <coughs> 2020. Actually, I'm going to ask you to explain what, why we do that. Well, Dave usually tells us <laughs> that it is a little caveat in the law that um, the wording says that we need a resolution as well as an ordinance. Can we elaborate on that? So maybe Dave would like to. <laughs> well, it is um, 
so we have the ordinance, well, back up. You pass a budget by ordinance. So to amend a budget, you need to pass an ordinance amending the prior ordinance. Uh, there is a state statute that says that any time you pass an ordinance to amend a budget, you should also do a resolution as this name or heading applies to describe the facts and reasons for the necessary amendment to the budget. Uh, typically, we like to be thorough with our budget amendment ordinances, and you can read the ordinance to determine the facts and reasons that uh, prompted the necessary changes. But the statute does say you should have a resolution. We were in litigation years ago where opposing counsel raised this and tried to trip us up, so ever since then we've done a resolution every time we've done an ordinance. Very good. Okay, so resolution, we need a motion and a second. I have a motion. Move to approve. Awesome. Motion is being seconded. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. We don't need to read that one twice. Okay, now we're going to go back to the uh, mayor's report, and uh, we've had the, the uh, proclamation, which is great. A couple of things uh, that I think are uh, important, and, uh, then I think uh, that uh, uh, Mark may want to talk about this a little bit too, but um, we're going to, one thing that we do want to talk about is the gas. Uh, the, it appears, and uh, Dave, you can help me out here, that we're going to have a rate increase, at least a temporary one, until the court can, can uh, rule on this, that uh, can go through anyway as early as the 1st of March. Am I right? That's you correct. want to explain that? The rate increase is being presented by our pipeline. We get our gas from Panhandle Eastern Pipeline. They have a transportation fee that is part of the overall cost of gas. It's, it's not a big portion of it, but they're asking for a 400% increase on this one rate, which um, we have, we have uh, with our gas marketer, we have grouped with some other people to intervene in this lawsuit, and hopefully we can uh, come out on top once it's said and done, but it is going to go into effect the 1st of March, I do believe and uh, we'll have to deal with that. I think our rates are already set for March, so we may have to amend something or look at that. But uh, that's where it is right now. And we just, uh, we're gonna have to think about how we wanna handle that. Uh, do we want to raise uh, the money or, or just, uh, and then lower it again? When we get the money back, we feel confident that we're gonna get all or some. We actually asked for a decrease. And there seems to be law to support the fact we will get a decrease. Or do we want to just eat it for three or four months or however long it's going to take? Um, do we know how long it's going to take? September was the expected resolution date, so. What kind of money are we talking about? Uh, well, from what I understand, and what, and then I've asked Jim to double check my numbers, but I think we're looking at about a $6,000 a month increase all told for everything and uh, we make about 12,000 a month on the gas company so we could eat it and then get it back in a lump sum without having to go through gyrations but I'd like for Jim to look at those numbers too we're going to get together hopefully Thursday and I'll give him all the data and he'll churn those if he comes out with what I say the next meeting we'll have hard numbers to talk about Of course, it's based on usage, and, and luckily we'll be going into the uh, war, uh, warmer months, spring, March, April, May, June. We shouldn't be, the gas usage will be down, so it's not it's not uh, December, January, February, which is good. But well, we have, the, the thing you got to remember, we have fixed costs in there, mm -hmm. and so the fixed costs won't ever go away. And if, yeah. our, if our sales and use of gas, if the revenue goes down enough, we could get near nearer to fixed costs. So. Jim and I think I think we ought to look at it. So it could not be six thousand every month because of the weather. Okay. Right. Right. I hate to temporarily raise rates. Yeah, I think it in any way possible that we we just absorb it. I think that's a good yeah, chance. I think that would it's probably we'll see what the numbers say, but I would turn the system on that way. I think you're 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 on target on that. 
I think most of the cities in the gas commission are thinking the same thing. Okay, and I have two other things uh, that I wanted to talk about. And one of them is uh, a meeting we had a couple weeks ago with uh, really FEMA and and SEMA and uh, the Department of the Interior on flood maps and so forth. And do we have those maps available for people to look at? Yeah, I have them in my office. If yeah. anybody wants to see the latest map, which is considerably different than, they actually have a very good plan on how to do this now, it was all explained to us. They actually operate on three square feet. That's, that's a point at the center of every three, three square, square feet. And they, they take a measurement there. They used to do it on 30 feet, I think. Right. And it was, you know, you could miss hills and everything. So anyway, after we were finished with this, the one uh, guy said, you know, we looked at the downtown and and uh, Free and Creek Bridge, and uh, and he suggested, why don't you, we have some engineering money, why don't we uh, do a survey to see if we can't build a wall, a, a, a flood wall with a pump? And I said, well, we've been talking about that, but uh, uh, well, let's look at doing a survey to see if it makes any sense or if it's even feasible. So we're going to pursue the, the engineering survey at this point. I was kind of surprised that um, we'd have to also get all the money to build it because I don't think Herman wants to put the, a million bucks or five hundred thousand or something like that. In the meantime, so we're, we're looking at that. I want you to know that what's going on. In the meantime. Uh, we got a. Uh, we were contacted by um, Moda, and they said we think it's time for our first meeting, serious meeting, on a new bridge over Freen Creek. And we were kind of not expecting that, were we? So uh, we said, sure. When do you want to meet? Uh, you know, tomorrow, the next day. How quick can we get? So I think they're coming next week, is it? Uh, yeah, Wednesday. And uh, so we will have a. I don't know what a serious meeting is, but we're going to find out. So anybody that wants to come, that's fine. And uh, well, let me know what time the meeting. Is. Yeah, and Two we'll. Uh, two I'll give you the date, though. I'm not sure. And so that those are some of the things that we've got that um, that we've got going. And uh, um, I'm very happy that we passed the guest house bill. I'm glad to get that off the table finally. It's been going on for for a year. It's been a year, and uh, maybe an extra week or two. But it's been a long time. And I'm glad that's done. I think it's a good thing for the city and. Susan's worked extremely hard on that, and I know she's had a lot of sleepless nights on it, trying to figure out the best way to do this and that. I don't know how big her phone bill's been, but she's been calling everywhere, and uh, we have it done now, so that's that's excellent. And uh, so I'm really thrilled on that. We were able to combine something uh, that I think is really good for tourism and the fact we will have safety measures and inspections and also something good for the people that own their homes and they'll at least get a heads up if, if one is gonna go into their neighborhood. And you can't really propose that. I think that's, people People have property rights, everybody has property rights, so I'm happy that that, that, that was, that was uh, finalized tonight. Um, Mark? Sure, just a couple of things. Yeah, sure. It's <laughs> It's hard to follow him. So. Okay. <laughs> I attended the uh, Merrimack Regional Planning Commission meeting last Thursday, where we met with uh, representatives from our federal legislators. Got to talk to them about our needs. On Friday, uh, myself and a couple other guys uh, from the Public Works went to a utility roundtable discussion in Macon, Missouri. It's nice, sponsored by MPUA. Friday, we have our annual insurance audit. That's always fun. Uh, next Thursday, the 20th, I'll be attending the Gaston Valley Enterprise Zone meeting. And once again, this is a, and, uh, every meeting, I want to thank the street department and, and the park for keeping our streets cleared after the last storm. Hey. That's it. Okay, I forgot two things. I'll be uh, next week, next to, ne tomorrow, not next week, tomorrow and Wednesday, I'll be in Jeff City attending the uh, Missouri Municipal League meetings. It's legislative day, so we'll be meeting with the senators, the legislature, and the governor. And uh, we'll get briefed on all the bills that have been introduced, which ones are good. And uh, we, MML is our lobbyist. They're the people that advise us and tell us what the pitfalls are, what's going on, what the scuttlebutt is, and that sort of thing. 
So they'll tell us which ones are good, which ones are bad, and what they're going to do about it. And so we get to find out what's happening. I'm also on the committee, the Ground Roots Committee, that actually initiates the responses from MML. So that will be, that's our advantage also. So we can, we can, uh, we know, we decide how it's going to turn out. Uh, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, the Mayor, Missouri Mayor's Association will have meetings. And uh, that is more, a little more proactive group than it was in the past. And they will have the mayor, will have the governor again. So I get to see him twice. President Pro Tem of the, of, uh, of the Senate and uh, of the Secretary of State will all be involved in that one. So those are uh, good uh, things for us to be involved in. And they, they, uh, they give us a high visibility and they also let us know what's happening as far as Jefferson City goes in the politics. So that's where I'll be. Uh, so there we go. That's, that is my report now. Okay, now we have uh, on old business. Uh, what is happening with the Calabite franchise fees? Uh, their Calabite's attorney has advised Calabite that a tax on the provision of internet service is not legal based on some 2015 federal law. Uh, we think that they're just looking at the tip of the iceberg in terms of this issue and the way that uh, we prepared the ordinance and calling it a, basically a payment in lieu of taxes and then how we framed it, not to mention the fact that they wrote a letter accepting the ordinance and all the provisions of it. Uh, I think we'll get them to come around on that one. I think so too, and we thought about this. This is an example of uh, Dave and Ken Hines working on this. Ken has a lot of experience, so um, he's well respected in this area. I think we have it right, and I don't think they do. So, we'll, he, if this fails, we also included in the provision um, a clause that said if this is somehow found uh, unworkable, illegal, or for any other reason, reason un undoable, you will pay us 5% for some other expense we have, like a something, we'll call it something, and get our money anyway. So uh, we didn't we didn't overlook that. So that's you know, there. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. Transferring ownership of KVA 69 bulls and maintenance to Central Electric. Uh, sort of similar. The Central Electric attorney, being ultra conservative, uh, cited some law that uh, anytime you want to transfer any portion of a municipal owned uh, electric system, that you have to go to a vote of the people to approve it. Uh, even if it's just a small part of the electric system. Um, I found some authority that says otherwise, um, and I'm going to send that to her, and hopefully we get them to come around on that as well. And I'm sure we will. I, I think that uh, people don't vote if we want to give a couple polls away or something like that. So, uh, But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll prevail on that. Um, I'm going to discuss, discuss Brubaker and Associates. They're the people that did the initial proposal uh, for reserve amounts and types and purposes for the electric company and uh, um, <coughs> I, I asked the utility advisory board what they thought they voted to they thought it would be a good idea to uh, upgrade these uh, these numbers and Brubaker and Associates it the amount that they want is three thousand dollars I said two thousand or three thousand. Then I said two thousand, and I may have said three thousand, but it's three thousand uh, dollars. We don't have a, a motion here to to pay this. I believe Mark could pay it if he wanted to, but um, the reason we do this is there's no. It's not it, these two aldermen and the mayor say this, or the uh, department head says that, or Mark thinks it's something else. This this is something we can hang our hat on and say an outside third party independently evaluated it and said it should be this amount. So I think they thought it was a good idea. I think it's a good idea, and I want, I like to, to proceed next time with some kind of either a motion or tonight. If you want Mark to go ahead and do it, um, we can get him started. Uh, what do y'all think about that? I think those are very important numbers for us to have. I mean, we that those are areas where we have to have the right amount of money if something goes wrong. And they change all the time. They usually go up. So I would think that uh, 
we need to make sure we have reserves that are adequate for some catastrophe that might uh, happen where we lose a bunch of poles or we have a bunch of equipment go out. So that's, I think it's important to you. Do you want to, to authorize Mark to go ahead and, and uh, contact him? I would make a motion to that. Do we have a second? I'm second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, we will contact Brubaker and tell him to move on. Now, is there any other old business? Yes, I have something. Oh. A uh, street line at the intersection of Reserve and Highway 1. We discussed this in the past. Yeah, Jesse was actually had talked to me about that. I'll check with him and see. They were well, someone had pointed something else to me that honestly never occurred to me. And considering where that street line is, is I'm amazed I didn't. But towards walk around down there, John. I mean that is talking about first and Reserve. Reserve and uh, Highway 1. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Believe it or not, I've seen people walking around that bluff in the dark and right on that corner down there. Tourists do walk around down there. We could get somebody hit. Amen. I mean, says he as, he aside from the fact that it's a city intersection, it should have a light there anyway. I mean, that's not a bad, another bad reason to get one in there. So no, I, I agree with that. It's going to be hard to light the bluff. No? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's. But. That's a little more point. You mean strictly at reserve and one on Yes. That's the point. Okay. Yeah. And that's the street where we talked about making better reflective markers for cars that are coming. I think that's down the end there. West. Yeah. <coughs> Is we're that the end where it turns and goes up the hill? Yeah, where Second Street comes down and hits reserve, that could be marked a little better too. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, reflective markers would probably be wonderful out right there. Okay. okay. Anything else, Dave? Anybody else have any old business? Did we fix the mirror at market? We've tried it twice now, and it's still too low. I saw it tonight, and it's still a little too low. Basically, it shows down on the street. It needs to be raised up. Um, somebody needs to get in a car, and, and, and well, somebody's adjusting it, and adjust it that way. Um, so I get with Todd. To uh, he went and checked it again today. I guess he didn't get it quite right. I'll check with him. It's too. better though. Tell him it's better. Sure. It was fine. Don't get him. Came up. It, it's, it's better. Yeah, I'm well, open. I'll meet him up there. We'll do it. Okay. Okay, anything else? Okay, new business. Yes. Uh, I want to talk about Art Brigham's building, uh, 910 Jefferson Street, and where that stands. There's a lot of back and forth between Mark, Dave, uh, Mr. Brigham's attorney and I guess it's uh, DNR. DNR. And I, I'm not sure I know exactly who's on first here. I just know they're all talking and we're not getting anywhere, in my opinion. So, uh, 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 Dave, do you want to take a crack at this first and see what you can tell us about it? Or? Well, we went through the hearings uh, long ago that we had to go through uh, according to law in order to uh, declare the building a, a, a nuisance uh, and dangerous uh, so that the city could, if it wanted to, uh, go in and, and knock it down and clean it up and have the cost uh, considered a lien on the property. Um, for a couple of uh, practical reasons, the city hasn't done that yet. One being uh, there's alleged uh, contamination in the building and hazardous materials. Uh, and another is there's a bunch of equipment in there that Brigham owned um, that a bunch of people had security interests in and they're wanting to get that out of there and, and have an auction and get what they can for it and, and pay it to those secured parties. And so, uh, and you know, the city say, well, the city can go in there and take out that equipment. I don't know what the equipment is, but apparently it's big and heavy and bulky and you don't just go in with, you know, two guys two men in a truck, you know, and yeah. it's a lot harder than moving mannequins. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, but that is embarrassing. Yeah, they, uh, uh, we've been waiting a long time. Art and his attorney have been saying, we're having this auction, we're, we're getting that stuff out of there, and, and now I think the scheduling of that is imminent, and uh, they have asked the city to provide electric uh, for that purpose. Um, it, we thought perhaps uh, we might be more cooperative in terms of providing electric if they would cooperate with DNR 
and get DNR the financial information from Art that DNR wants in order to determine if Brigham qualifies for assistance in DNR or another agency coming and cleaning up the contamination for it. And so lots of moving parts here, but um, so the I, think, line I think we are making progress, but it, there hadn't really been any progress from Halloween until a week ago, and in, in the last week I think there's been progress. Well, keep, keep the pedal to the metal on that because um, obviously Mr. Brigham does not have the money to clean it up. Um, he's in, I guess, I don't know if he's technically in Chapter 13 or what, 11 or whatever, uh, or not. I really don't know that, but uh, he hasn't paid his taxes for some time, and that's hanging out there. And, and so he needs to, to, to um, cooperate with DNR in filling out whatever financial information they require so they can, they can uh, see if he qualifies for, if that building qualifies for assistance in being cleaned up. And that's where we stand now, and I'd like to, to see them move forward on that before, at the same time that we move forward, giving them electric and uh, whatever else they need to get the, that equipment sold out of there. Well, on that, did, I know Jesse's been awful busy. I assume he hasn't had a chance to go over and look at that building and decide if it's safe to turn on he, the electric. He told me they could definitely look it up. Okay, I just, uh, yeah. yeah, you flip well, the our side. It goes up in a fireball. It's, uh, our side of it's fine. Yeah, what happens inside is not our. Oh, okay. Not our he has a self contained fireball, will you? Well, if there's liens against all that equipment and there, the people that have those liens might get a little upset if we burn it up. You know, we're not going to burn it up. Oh, okay. But there's enough leaky through the ceiling that I would not feel safe putting electric to that building. Well, uh, yes, uh, we've got an electric specialist there. So when the ceiling tiles are all down. they got trash cans sitting around and plastic tarp to get it. Leaks worse than the sieve. The sieve is shorts in there. Don't go in there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Any, any that's that. I mean, yeah. Mark, do you want to say anything? No, I, I was any other, by I'm going to have any other questions because not this, on is, that one. this has got about ten different things. Yeah, it's got to go in a lot of different directions here. Now, does that? I know the address is nine ten Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Does that include both buildings? No, well, the brick building is actually nine ten Jefferson. So the old Bevco building probably would have a different address. I don't know. It's always been. I think that's correct. You know, I think it, 910 Jefferson is the yellow building, oh, and the other, the brick building has a West 9th Street address. Well, see, the yellow building, the liens against uh, against that building are us. The Pretty brick much. building, there's how many pages of liens? No, there's several. 28 liens on the other. Yeah, and they ain't us. So, so it's going to be a little bit more of a bigger fish to fry. All right, any other new business? Yes. Please. Uh, it was called my attention. Uh, Jim and I have discussed this. The uh, soccer fields below my house. Uh, years ago, that slope was increased out into the field. It's basically one of the primary sled riding hills for the kids. The drainage on that field really sucks. The other uh, week, when the kids were trying to sled ride, they were having to aim between the water holes down there. Now, I'm, I don't know if we got dirt laying around or anything else, but because of what we just discussed and the other doctor's building that's coming down, we're going to end up with a bunch of film material here. How much of it's clean, I don't know. Could we use some of that to maybe change that drainage away from the bottom of that slope? I mean, right now, you if, yeah. if it was ball season, you couldn't even play ball down there because once you get off the ball diamond, it's a lake going over towards Washington Street. I mean, I don't... I would think brick, you know, you run a crawl over it's going to crush up pretty nice, but can you use that in that? I don't know. But since it was asked about it, and like I said, Jim and I discussed it, uh, would you please look into that and see if maybe we could use some of that to get rid of some of the water holes out there? Okay. The kids really don't have any other safe place to sled right in town. Hospital Hill. Hmm? Hospital Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with all the trees and barricades mm -hmm. down there and everything. Uh, you know. That's a slum. That's a slum. Yeah, the trees stop you pretty quick. Yeah. Well, the hospital's right there. Good point. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, do we have any other forms? Okay, uh, now let's get to the motions. The minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion made and seconded uh, to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Okay. Invoices for payment. Motion to pay the bills. Now second. We have a motion made and seconded to pay the bills. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Okay, municipal quick claim B. Bruce B. and Roberta A. Cox, Lot 5E, 2nd Street. Do we, uh, Trish, this is, I take it, one of the regular ones that we always have that have some little discrepancy somewhere, and we need to do it like we do all the other ones. Okay, is there any other questions about that? Move to approve. No, second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded on this side to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. I will abstain. And one abstention. Motion passed. Annual renewal of Missouri Intergovernmental Risk Management Association, MRMA, insurance coverage. We have a motion. I mean, this is... Yeah, um, this oh, is okay. our standard renewal. Now, um... <laughs> like I said in the memo, um, we have been, because of some couple years ago, we had several vehicle accidents and work comp claims, so it threw us into that highest tier of loss experience. But this is our third year, so now barring anything major happening, it's going to start going down um, in hopefully substantial increments over the next few years. Okay. <clears throat> How long is our <clears throat> policy good for with Merlo? I mean, uh, it's renewable every year. Is there a limit on how many times it can be renewed? Okay. I didn't know. That's what I was trying to get. Okay, now, do I have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion's made and seconded on that side. All in, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carried. Liquor license, package liquor, Crystal Gardens, LLC. DBA Midwest Trading Post, 413 Market Street. Move to approve. Let me ask this. I got, I got your motion. I mean, what is this? Is this a regular liquor line? I know there's several kinds of liquor. It's just liquor. to sell packaged liquor. It's packaged liquor, okay. It's only for certain dates, too, isn't it? No, no, no it's an open liquor line. I don't know if it's just a weekend or something. It has to be sealed bottles and so forth. Not by the jury. Not by the jury. Okay, we have a motion made to approve this. Do I have a second? So moved. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carried. Picnic liquor license, St. George, fundraiser dinner, 128 West 4th Street, February 22nd, 2020. I is there any other information we need to know about that? I think they have this every year. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve this? Make a motion to be approved. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motions carried. Appoint Deborah Smith to the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is for a three and a half month uh, continuation of Myron Harris's term. He has had, he has personal reasons, he's had to uh, resign and has done so. So I, uh, you've seen probably, she's been approved, uh, the, the uh, P and Z Commission. I talked with Dolores. Dolores said they had no uh, objections. So can we approve it? Can I have a motion? One little thing on this, uh, <clears throat> over this deal with the uh, the guest house ordinance and everything, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of these people and I've told them all that, uh, you know, we, we made great, you know, we just don't deny these things, you know, mm -hmm. they go through, they run the course, we put them through, but they would get a fair shake. Yet before the inks even dry on that document, we're pointing somebody down, don't get me wrong, I like this lady, mm -hmm. I like her husband, 
which he, she is decidedly anti guest house. And this is the person where you're wanting to appoint to the people that decide whether or not a guest house gets it. I don't think Dolores will allow any person to to, to run her commission. Okay. I don't. I think she just had a personal experience with the guest house of BB and whatever. And had some instances in her neighborhood that she did not agree with. And how Which many people are on that board? It's not just one person. Is there six? No, there's just I think it's seven. Five, seven. Five, seven. Seven. I think it's seven, yeah. So I don't think that I appreciate your comment, but I, I really think that uh, I, I, I can tell you one thing Dolores will not let one person bully her. And uh, she has some strong personalities, and they're not able to do it. She won't well, they're not stronger than hers. <laughs> She's the only one in there. <laughs> okay. Um, do I have a motion to accept this? Make a motion to accept Deborah Smith on the P and Z. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you. We have a motion made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed, say nay. Welcome aboard. Okay, now we're set up for closed session, and uh, uh, can I have a motion to go into closed session? I move that we go into closed session to, for the purpose of dealing with matters relating to legal actions, cause of action, <coughs> litigation, or privileged communication between the city's representatives and its attorneys. So, okay, we're going to need a vote. Dave Fairburn, will you start? All right. All right. Uh, Hi. We're now in closed session, so uh, we'll take a minute or so and we'll vacate the room. Thank you.